Hey everyone, it's Tango Oscar Mike. It's time for another tailgate talk. I want to talk about being prepared for emergency communications and some of the things you should be aware of. Um, coming up October 1st is the ARRL Simulated Emergency Test, otherwise known as the SET. It's an exercise in emergency communications. Um, it's a national event. We'll test emergency communications uh, with our local agencies, regional and statewide, and even try to reach uh, other states as well. Uh, we'll use voice, we'll use, uh, blah. we will use voice and digital modes such as FL Digi and WinLink are the, the primary ones, although we may try some JSA call or something like that too. Um, in preparing for that, you know, you have the radio gear, and we could go on and on about the radio gear, um, but I want to talk about um, just the other stuff that you might need to be prepared for this event. Uh, we all know that you're going to need an antenna, power supply, um, all that stuff. Uh, but I want to go over the difference between the hard copy and electronic. So I always have right in the rain notebooks. Uh, handy to take down notes and stuff like that. Excuse me, uh, writing utensils in here. But I also have a bunch of notes, uh, contact information, and that kind of stuff uh, in case I need it. Uh, there's frequencies in here for uh, common nets, some emergency phone numbers. Uh, I also made this binder. This is my binder for uh, for the information for my county. As you can see, there's a nice big band planned on the back. Uh, but again, in here are forms, uh, blank ICS forms, which is the Incident Command System. Uh, let's see, uh, maps of the area, uh, just general information that pertains to my community. Uh, there's some uh, Incident Command System and some NIMS, which is the National Incident Management System. Uh, I do have some information in here about those. Uh, just a, a bunch of stuff. Uh, I also carry with me, usually, uh, I have a, a repeater directory book. This is the, the OxFog, which is the Auxiliary Communications Field Operations Guide. I have the NIFOG. This is the Homeland Security National Interoperability uh, Field Operations Guide. Um, this one's kind of cool. Uh, the Oxfog's good too. This one is kind of cool because it has some stuff in here uh, that you wouldn't think is in here. Um, some of it is RJ45 wiring for networks and phone systems. Uh, there's uh, other information in here that might be useful if you are, if something really bad has happened and you need to fix a network issue or something like that. And being a network guy, uh, it's kind of cool to see that information in there. Uh, there's information on satellite dialing instructions if you have a satellite phone. Uh, there's, of course, band planned and some other stuff. Um, those are good. Whew. What else? The ARIES uh, Field Resource Manual. Uh, I have some information written in here as well. Um, but this is basically all the uh, general ARIES information. They're great to have. But as you can see, all this starts to add up. Um, and there's even more that you want to have. Uh, I do have some manuals and stuff in here, too. So that brings us to electronics. Uh, the first electronics that you might have is your phone. Uh, the phone is great to store information on, um, but in a real emergency, you're not going to have internet and you're not going to have cellular service. So like Google Maps doesn't work without cellular service because it needs to have the maps. Now you can download the maps for offline use ahead of time, um, but if you don't do that, they're not there. So anything that's not on here on your phone right at this moment isn't gonna be good uh, any of any use to you in an emergency because you're not gonna be able to access it. So make sure you have your phone, whichever phone it is, make sure you go out to Google Maps or whatever map program you use. Make sure you get some offline maps and handle that. Um, but you can store a lot of information on here. You can have PDFs uh, with, for all this stuff, you can have PDFs on your phone um, and documents that you can view. So um, 
they, they are handy. Uh, they're easy to keep charged up with a, a USB adapter, um, whatever you might need. Uh, raspberry Pis, you know, I love the Raspberry Pi. Um, you could take this somewhere, uh, plug it into a, you know, plug a keyboard into it, plug a monitor into it. Um, but this, this has, this used to be my favorite tool for, for ham radio. Um, but it, it's kind of fallen out of favor. Uh, and there's a, a few reasons why. Um, one is all the stuff that you have to take with you to, to operate this. Um, if you don't have it, or if you're not going somewhere where it's available, um, you're going to need a keyboard, you're going to need a screen, a mouse or a touchpad or something. Um, power for this, power for the screen, and it's all a bunch of little pieces. Whenever you could carry the same thing in a small laptop now, um, especially with devices like the Surface Go laptops, uh, tablets with the little keyboards, um, they're more powerful than this and a lot easier to use. Now they're running Windows. Um, I have switched over to using this uh, Lenovo ThinkPad laptop that I've had for a while now. Um, I bought this like 2019, so until this dies, I'm probably not going to replace it. Now I know there's some really heavy-duty laptops out there like the Panasonic Toughbook, um, but for my, I have a case that I put this in that's, that's water-resistant, so when I go somewhere, uh, if I'm going from my vehicle to another location, I have some water resistance on it. But the reason I've gone to a, a laptop, or uh, in this case, a Windows laptop, and I know a lot of people love Linux. I love Linux. I used to be a certified Red Hat engineer. Um, I still do a lot of Linux stuff, but my company, everything's standardized on Windows. And when I go to the EOC, um, they are on one of the county's command vehicles. They're all Windows as well. So it's all standardized. We're all using the same software. Um, and there's some software that works great on Windows that, you know, you kind of have to have some knowledge on setting this up and working with Linux to get it working on here. Um, it's not all smooth cut and dry where with the laptop, I can just download the laptop and download the programs of the laptop and install them. It's pretty simple. And I might have to, if I'm providing emergency communications, digital, whatever, at an EOC, um, and if it's for a long period of time, I may have to release control of my laptop and let somebody else use it. And somebody may have a harder time, who's not familiar with the Raspberry Pi, would have a harder time using this than somebody um, most people are familiar with Windows and would be able to use this and run programs on it. So that's why I am sticking with Windows at this time. Now with, a, with your laptop, you do want to have multiple ways to power the laptop. Um, so I have, uh, for my laptop, I have the wall adapter and I also have a 12 volt adapter so I can run it off a cigarette lighter, for example, with uh, power poles on it plugged into one of my Bioano batteries or something like that. So uh, that's good. Some other things you might want to have with the laptop. Uh, a bunch of cheap USB drives. Um, of course, I have my good USB drive where I back up all my data to. But if you go to an EOC and you're downloading messages um, or, or taking traffic from the radio and you're entering that into your laptop, you're going to have to be able to give that to somebody. And if there's not a network up and active that you can connect to to share that information, um, you're going to do the old sneaker net. Uh, you're going to copy it to a cheap USB drive. Uh, I used to have a stack of these, as you can see, this is number five. These are cheap two gig uh, USB drives. Uh, they're, they're the old stink bugs. They're, they're the, old, uh, um, the old style. I don't even know if they're USB two. I think they're USB one. So they're pretty slow, but they're fine for copying text documents and other files too. Um, I have a good laptop USB three speed um, that I back up all my data to on that. Uh, on that drive, as well as on my laptop, I have manuals for all my radios and manuals for radios that I don't even own. Um, I have manuals for radios that are in the OC, and I have manuals for just some of the more common radios that are out there in case I need uh, a manual for those radios. Um, trying to think what else. 
Yeah, so all the manuals, all the software, uh, not just installed, but copies of the installation files uh, for that software, like FLDG, WinLink, Chirp, um, any other programming software for some of the radios I have. Uh, I have a UG, um, uh, what is it, UG9, uh, Wushan UV9D, and it has its own custom software program, that radio, so I have that on there. Um, you're going to want to have a bunch of USB cables of all different types, uh, not just ones to charge your phone uh, or to charge your camera, uh, whatever you're going to be charging, but also think about connecting your laptop to a printer. You know that uh, special USB cable they have that you normally use to connect to a printer? Uh, you should have one of those in your bag. Um, even if you don't have those devices, uh, you may want to carry extra USB cables because if you're an EOC for an extended emergency, somebody is going to come up and say, hey, my phone's dead. I have data on my phone I need, or I'm using it to take pictures of the incident. I need something to charge my, everything's bothering me. I need uh, a charger to charge my phone. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, just like on your phone, you can download maps offline and use them for directions. You can also do that on your laptop. And Microsoft has the Maps app on the laptop. So I don't know how far it goes back, but at least on Windows 10 and Windows 11, there's a map utility. And in that utility, you can go in and download offline maps for all the states. Uh, and once you do that, you can pull up and get directions off the laptop. Now, unless your laptop has a GPS built into it, uh, you're probably not going to be able to use that for active directions, meaning it's not going to track you or know where your location is. Uh, I've tried using an external USB drive. Uh, also, the ICOM 705 has a USB drive hooked into it, but it doesn't work natively with the Windows application to be able to provide you GPS signal. So, um, take a look at it. It's very easy to go out and download maps. Um, to your laptop from this device. Uh, and the reason that might be important, think about if uh, not everybody's gonna remember to download the, the maps offline. And if you're in the EOC, what happens when somebody calls, uh, maybe another ham radio operator calls and says, hey, I'm at such and such a house, I need medical attention. Maybe they live in an area you're not familiar with, or maybe it's an area where other volunteers like EMS police aren't familiar with. Maybe the GPS data in their cars relies on cellular network. Um, or just maybe it's another, another ham uh, or volunteer that you're trying to direct to that person's house to give them a hand. You may have to pull up step-by-step -step directions and give them directions to get to that location. Um, so that's, that's a good thing to have. Um, you can provide GPS locations too. Um, you can provide GPS location, uh, maybe a helicopter, a rescue helicopter needs to land somewhere. You can pull up on the map, look for, uh, uh, look at the satellite photos for a, a field or something for the helicopter to land. Maybe tag that area as a possible landing zone or something like that. But it's a good uh, thing to do. So do it now, because again, if the internet's down, what, what you have is what you have. You're not going to get be able to get any more information off of there. Now, I know there's Starlink and other uh, satellite-based network systems that may or may not be available to you um, in the case of an emergency. So, again, get it now. Prepare. Having some hard copies is always good, too, um, but you, that's not always going to be available to you. Well, another piece of software that I use on my laptop is VeraCrypt. Uh, basically, VeraCrypt lets you create a large file on the laptop that acts as a virtual drive that's encrypted where you can store information. I do that just for the case that I may, again, have to let somebody else use my laptop. If you're doing an emergency, uh, uh, volunteering an emergency for a long period of time and you're set up and you're doing communications, you're spider coming down in front of my face. Eventually, you're going to have to take a break. You're going to have to get some sleep. And 
if the other person doesn't hasn't prepared isn't prepared or if you're already set up and running they're just going to want to be able to use your device so having it personalized for you and having personal data on it isn't always good unless it's encrypted in a separate area um, that also makes it very nice because you can just copy that one file uh, from that you created with VeraCrypt onto a USB drive and you've backed up all your personal documents uh, onto that drive. So, yep, yeah, that's my uh, that's my little spiel. Um, I encourage everybody that's interested in emergency communications to look into the ARRIL simulated emergency test. Uh, we always have a bunch of objectives, especially communicating with other EOCs. We get bonus points for the number of participants, uh, for running on emergency power. It's it's not a contest, but it's kind of scored like a contest. Uh, we get points for the each formal message, uh, piece of formal traffic we send. And uh, it's a good challenge. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot this year. Uh, we're going to be training on one of the county's command vehicles. Um, getting it, teaching people how to get it prepped and set up in case of uh, there's an emergency, you know, how to take care of it, uh, set up the antennas on it or anything else, um, anything that we can do to help out in an emergency. So, again, make sure you're prepared before you need it because if, uh, if it happens 15 minutes from now, you're not going to have all the data you need. Um, if it's an emergency, what if somebody asks you for a weather report? Is your radio programmed with radio with weather frequencies, or are you going to be able to listen to the National Weather Service and get a current weather report? Because that's something that's very important in an emergency situation. Are you expecting more rain? Is there going to be more flooding? Are you expecting more tornadoes? So monitoring the weather is something that uh, may be requested of you too, as well as you know getting directions to different locations. So. Well, I hope this starts the gears turning in your head and starts you thinking about the items you need to stay prepared. Uh, it doesn't take a lot to get this stuff prepared ahead of time, um, but it is something that you should do. Uh, I'm sitting here on my truck, and in the back of my truck there is an uh, old 511 backpack that has a change of clothes, uh, some cooking utensils, uh, there's even some food in it and other stuff. Um, so I am ready to go uh, pretty quickly. Um, one of my uh, little ammo crates here, um, this actually has a, a bunch of truck stuff, some tools. The other one has antennas, rope, uh, wire, you know, one has trash bags in it in case I need a trash bag, that kind of stuff. So it doesn't take a lot to have all this stuff prepared ahead of time. You just have to think about it and think about what you might need. So, hey, I'll give you a, uh, after the SET drill, I'll probably do a after action report of how things went. And we'll see how uh, we'll see how we do, and we'll see how the people that uh, come to the event. I'm the emergency coordinator for my area, and I'm already working on some sniff scenarios and uh, curveballs I can throw at them during the exercise. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. This is Tango Oscar Mike, 73. Take care. Tango Oscar Mike.